Okay, so today I'm going to talk about moving from wholeness, being consciously aware of my wholeness and perceiving myself as whole and how that makes it very clear and simple about knowing whether you are moving and making decisions from love or from fear. So first of all, I want to emphasize being consciously aware of my wholeness. You can decide mentally that I am whole. You can have a mystical experience that may very well break some of your mind structures that don't believe that they're whole, but you have to have a felt sense of wholeness, right? You have to perceive yourself as, as whole, meaning, and you know, in real life situations, right? Whether it's a money situation, whether it's any kind of challenge, you don't feel you don't your energy doesn't collapse and you don't feel that there are no solutions because you feel whole and you feel um your your godness so to speak and your creativity and you don't seek outside of yourself the essence of what you want which is the biggest like the biggest waster of energy is our tendency to seek the essence of what we want outside of ourselves so decisions become very easy when I know, when I know, not when I postulate, not when I hypothesize, not when I believe that I'm whole, when I know that I'm whole. Knowing that I'm whole means I'm conscious of my wholeness. So what does that mean? Well, in a feeling sense, right? In any situation, like I said, that may potentially make you not feel whole, you do feel whole. So what? no matter what you do or do not have in your life, no matter what your life does or does not look like, you have no image to buttress, you have no, um, you have nothing to explain, nothing to prove, nothing to be, you just are, you just know yourself as an emanation of God and therefore perfect and holy. And that is enough and so when i consciously perceive myself as whole my decisions or my actions that stem from that felt sense that reality that knowledge of wholeness they will lead me towards the expansion through love right instead of expansion through lessons and creating the same um, conditions that are familiar from my childhood so the reason why people have trouble with this question like can I really trust my natural inclinations is that what feels natural to them, what feels like their joy, what actually may even feel like an expansion of their energy is actually an addictive pattern, is actually stress, is actually an urgency, right? A lot of people confuse urgency with inspiration, they confuse codependency with deep like reverence and love they confuse um, they confuse like the need to accomplish something or like a competitive sense with like inspiration and so what is required for you to be able to really move from your heart is that you're familiar with your heart and with wholeness you are familiar with, in a feeling sense, you have knowledge of, by sensing and knowing, in your feeling, the reality that you are whole. And how do you do that? You anchor the frequency of wholeness. You, you focus on that, you focus on your heart. You find whatever way works for you so that you somatically embody that knowledge of wholeness and to the exact degree I, I say a lot that the real shadow work is doing light work focusing on high frequencies really saturating yourself and being at one with wholeness go for a 10 minute walk and say to my say to yourself I'm going to walk feeling myself as whole I'm just gonna do that because I can because I can conjure a, a vibration and I can infuse it into my awareness I can expand it into my awareness I can merge with it and become it and walk as it and therefore it becomes real to me it is very important that the practice right of tuning is something that you do right so what I was gonna say is to the exact 
degree that you add light, it, shadows get exposed, right? That's why the ultimate shadow work is light work because it's unavoidable. It's You don't have to go looking for the parts of you that have low self-esteem or that are addicted to stress or chaos when you deliberately add ease. If you grew up in a chaotic environment, you might you might confuse chaos and adrenaline with inspiration. So let's say you have some self-knowledge and you see this about yourself, right? And the fruits of that is that you get exhausted, uh, you push your energy. So what would be a medicinal antidote to, um, to chaos? It would be order, harmony. Harmony is a really good one. Harmony is a great frequency. Like find a song that has a lot of coherence, a lot of harmony, and just feel harmony and stillness and clarity all at once, right? So if I'm so addicted, if I'm unconsciously addicted to chaos because it's literally all I knew for, for the my first years of my life, then my body's addicted to the chemicals produced by chaos. And so I unconsciously seek chaos in my environment, in my relationships, in my work situation. So, you know, to the person who says, well, if I was following my joy, I would just go buy a bag of cocaine. What's happening there is that they haven't created enough contrast between uh, what they're familiar with, right? So to them, what would feel like joy is actually a relief. And some people say, well, isn't that okay? Is, aren't, isn't what we're we reaching for relief? Yes, so conjure the feeling of relief, right? Conjure the feeling of relief. A good way to start to anchor frequencies is like if you have the tendency to seek outside yourself the essence of what you want, whether it's fun, whether it's um, soothing, right? Whether it's going to a psychic or talking to a friend or whatever, just imagine that you actually went through with the action, right? Let's say you talked to that friend that was really wise, but they're like in another country right now and you can't talk to them. So you're, you're starting to panic because you don't have access to your crutch. So just close your eyes and imagine that you're having the conversation with them or with your higher self, right? That's the most powerful thing. Just ask your higher self, like, what is it that I need to know right now? Do you have a message for me? And just feel your heart and let, and let yourself write and begin to, to learn how to soothe yourself. But the person that wants drugs or that kind of instant satisfaction, you know, often in the form of like not meaningful sex is that they're, what they really want is fun. What they really want is connection. And those people, I know a lot of them, are some of the most fun, awesome, connected, great networking people. Because that essence is inside of them, but they do not perceive it. They don't perceive it. They are not conscious of their funness. They're not conscious of their wholeness. They're not conscious of that they're connected. Right? So... You know, you want to use your mind and your ability to tune and focus to become conscious of the essence of what you want. And so I love, I love the frequency of wholeness. I mean, wholeness, that's what, that's what we want. You know, I taught, I used this crystal, right, to kind of represent ourselves as an emanation from the Godhead. This being kind of the unborn and then this being... Uh, the unborn and, and no experiencer and the eye awareness and presence and energy and manifestation and in this energy field right there's parts of ourselves that don't know that they're whole so when I anchor a frequency of wholeness so when I become conscious of wholeness because I make it felt to me I saturate myself in the feeling so therefore it becomes my reality not just an idea, not just a concept, not just a lofty goal, not just a great sounding state of being, but an actual reality. What happens is that when you, when you marinate in the frequency of wholeness, these pieces become whole. <laughs> because, and so the, the stream of energy from here to here is more seamless, right? Less pain, less suffering, less physical disease. And so, like, being consciously aware of your wholeness by feeling and practicing it, it helps you, right, make decisions. Because if I'm whole, what I choose, whether it's a partner, whether it's a vocation, whether it's what I want to eat, if I'm not trying to get anything from it, 
I don't want anything from you. I don't need power or status or money or protection or, or an image of any kind. I would just genuinely like to experience this. That's what's left is pure desire. That's how you tune to pure desire. You feel whole. You feel whole. You are consciously aware of your wholeness. And other frequencies like freedom, right? If you're, there are certain psychological sticking points that are rather sticky. And one of the very commonly sticky ones is codependency. And codependency can feel like reverence or true love or, but in reality, it's obligation and guilt, um, often religious conditioning that reinforces codependency. So why would it be so essential that you practice the feeling of freedom, right? Get into a meditation practice. I, I mentioned Joe Dispenza's uh, meditations a lot because they, they're already recorded with great music, with very coherent music, and he focuses on a frequency for like a certain amount of time. And if you're gonna do those, I'm gonna tell you that the trick to them is to merge to the, to the fullest extent possible with the frequency. Because to the extent that you become a frequency so fully that there's no thought to divide you from it and there's no observer, then you become it automatically. And that automatically starts to act through you, right? But you don't just wanna be meditating with Joe Dispenza or anybody, you wanna walk as it, like, you practice it in meditation when it's easy and then you carry it in your day. You carry it so that the experience of it expands in your awareness. So when it expands in your awareness now, it's familiar to you and we create what is familiar to us. So if I'm free, if I'm free, right? If I practice the feeling of freedom, then I might realize if I'm in a codependent relationship or a marriage that I actually have an option to leave. I'm not saying that you need to leave any situation. What this teaching about don't leave like until you raise your energy, like what that really means is don't leave when you're in conflict. Because if you leave a relationship still in conflict, like not understanding that you're in a codependent like web, right? You're in this tendency of staying in places you don't want to stay in because of guilt and shame and the perception that you are not free, the perception that you're not free. So you're taking that with you and it's in your energy field. So if you go to the next relationship and you don't feel free and you act based on guilt and you and you uh, self-deceive and you self-neglect and you and you don't honor your your desire, you're going to recreate it. You just you know you might find like a slightly better form person place thing but it will be it will begin to take on similar qualities because you're creating what's in your energy field which is that you don't feel free um maybe that you're so familiar with chaos if you're so familiar with chaos right the antidote would be to practice ease and harmony if you leave a relationship being familiar with chaos you're going to go into the next relationship and you're going to create chaos whether it's pushing somebody's buttons, right? Even if you feel like you're being gentle, like you're gonna find a way to create chaos. I promise, because it's in your energy field. So have some self-knowledge and begin to identify like, what are those energies that are familiar from my childhood? Am I addicted to stress and adrenaline and urgency? Do I, am I really competitive, right? Do I not trust life? Do I not trust life? What do I really need to enhance in my awareness with my mind and my ability to tune? Freedom, love, wholeness, wholeness. Really true inspiration, true inspiration. Inspiration and using a visualization like Imagining a tube of light coming in through the top of your head and then exploding out of your heart or through your throat, right? The throat is action and expression. So if I'm inspired, if I'm receiving inspiration from my higher self, from source, and I want, I want that to be what expresses through me, right? Not a sense of self-hatred or lack or stress or mistrust or distrust or paranoia or or grief. I don't want that to be what what makes decisions for me. I want to live at a certain level of energy and let that energy act through me. 
So the most essential part of making decisions based on love and based on your essence is that you become familiar with it in a feeling sense, in a feeling sense. And then watch how, watch how your mind tries to convince you not to listen to that. It's often, you know, people talk about this quiet voice, this quiet knowing, like often people are in relationship and they just know the person can have the best qualities in the world. They're, they could be, they could fit everything on a, on a certain checklist that you've made in your mind, but like there's not a resonance there. There's just no, in other words, there's no desire. And because we don't feel free to just be, follow our heart's desire, the mind has the tendency to then pick up negative tendencies, right? Because you don't feel free to move, we unconsciously believe that we need negative emotion to move because that's a child's perspective. Oh, I'm trapped in this house with these crazy parents and so I have to hide or throw a tantrum in order to put myself back in my own sacred space. But that's not the truth. The truth is that if you don't, if you don't desire to be somewhere, you have the freedom to go. And so then look at all the reasons why you don't want to go, all the fears that come up there, the, the fears of not surviving, the fears of hurting the other person. When it comes to hurting other people by leaving them, remember that it's much kinder to leave them to find somebody who desires them than to just stay with them out of guilt. So pay attention to like when there's just a, like clarity is another Clarity is like underneath emotion. It's underneath the astral body. Ooh, my tendency to go this way and avoid this. It's just like, it's just annoying. You don't have to make the person wrong or the place wrong or be mean to them. You don't need to be unkind or to make anything wrong to move away from it. You're free to move towards what you want. And on that note as well, so much energy is saved. So much energy comes back to you energy ceases being wasted when you no longer avoid pain. When you develop a sensual relationship with pain, right? That doesn't mean I indulge in it and I love it, you know? But it's like, I'm not gonna avoid it because we spend so much energy seeking what we want outside of us often when we are avoiding our pain. But when the thing is, when you stop avoiding pain, you feel your heart and you feel your pain at the same time, the pain, gets drawn up into the heart energy and it gets back it it gets drawn up back into wholeness and so what you're telling your subconscious mind when you stop escaping pain is like i'm safe i'm eternal like i'm not a separate self that needs to avoid discomfort or pain i'm the eternal presence that can be with this that can be with this child perspective with this fragment with this part of me that doesn't know its wholeness and when you are really present with your pain, that, that in and of itself really puts you back in a place of wholeness because so much of our actions are driven by the avoidance of pain. So just deciding I won't avoid my pain anymore. If I feel a contraction in my body, if I feel a shortness of breath, if I feel a dump of chemicals in my solar plexus, if I feel tension in my ovaries, right, I feel it that way sometimes, or a closing in my throat, I will slow down and I will let it open up. Maybe I'll let it speak to me. I will show it love and presence. So moving, being consciously aware of your wholeness, that is the key of living as the soul, right? Living as the soul, living as pure desire, um, and it becomes very simple and clear, but you have to make it familiar in your experience. You have to expand it in your experience. And, you know, maybe this suggestion isn't for everyone. I had personally in my like ego, it was very fragmented. And although I've always been acutely aware of energy, I was more aware of the energy in my environment than within myself. And a lot of sensitive people and a lot of empaths are that way. They've disassociated from their emotions because they're too strong and they just become acutely aware of environment to manage it, right? To manage it, to stay safe in it. So for me, like using these feeling practices, like 
they've really helped me embody my true nature and and things in my life shift for the better for the better for the better i I've, I've attracted amazing friends amazing confidants allies soul family a, a, amazing love and support that it reflects my own love of myself so yeah that's what wanted to come through today um i wanted to address like a lot of people ask me about oh i can't trust my natural inclinations yes you can uh, and and by the way if you're still in an addictive pattern and you honestly can't stop first of all it's a realization in and of itself that you can always stop and i'll just plant that seed but i'll also say that when you are truly at one with whatever you're doing you are more likely to go beyond it faster and that's a scary thought for a lot of people and please i'm not a doctor i'm not a psychologist i'm not be responsible for your own health but what happens a lot is that if people are in a behavior that's destructive to them but they're also feeling guilt so they have the behavior and guilt and guilt and guilt and guilt oh they're in this this resistant energy that doesn't let them move so if you were at one with yourself, no matter what, like, okay, so I have this behavior, I'm still whole. I'm still the Godhead, like expressing as this, and that's, I can be okay with that. And there's certain things that I, I recognize, like maybe very difficult for people to be okay with. Like I've mentioned, I had an eating disorder for many years. Like I had to learn how to, I didn't understand how to stop it. I tried really hard. Ultimately, it was like a physiological issue of uh, being undernourished, needing a lot more calories than I was taught that I needed, but I didn't allow that in. I, I tried still to control my body and eventually I had to accept like, wow, if I was like this forever, like, could I still love myself? Then I had to say yes, because the other choice is destructive behavior and guilt. And I don't want to live in conflict. I don't want to live in conflict. I want to be at one with life. So that came from my heart and I love you very much.